wanted to start off by showing off some of our interns and this is a few of the sites that they've actually worked and and some um, colleagues they've been able to meet in their work learn experience and if you want to go on to the next one We allow students to select their own site or they can use our resources to secure an internship. We have several resources that I'll, I'll discuss as we go through the, the um, presentation, but the sky's the limit is our philosophy in terms of where a student can intern. And the way we set up the program allows a student to pursue a site of their choice and earn credit. And there is a degree of rigor and I'll explain that through the pre presentation as well. There is no formal program at the internship site, so if there isn't a, a pre-existing program by, offered by the employer, the students still can intern and earn credit. Students don't have to earn credit when they intern. It's something we do recommend because it does help prepare your student for graduate school. Um, that's one thing that Chapman offers in terms of setting your student apart in a very personalized way. Not every university offers all majors to earn academic credit through an internship. So when you have multiple internships on your transcript, it does stand out. And employers will take note through your resume, of course, but grad schools will also take note that you've had some dedication to a field. And when they admit you, they want to see a degree of academic promise. So having had the chance to make decisions, gain experience, and gain exposure will certainly be an argument a student can use in their statement of intent to um, state why they should be accepted for that program. So the credit bearing program offers a formal relationship that can add to a nice element to your workplace if you do want to rec recruit as well. It, it creates a nice work learn culture if any of you as employers um, would like to hire a Chapman student. And hiring often um, offers you a nice pipeline for recruitment because you get to know your candidates before they apply. You will be wowed. Uh, I do often say that it's slow growing to recruit a Chapman student because they're so dynamic. So if you want to go on to the, the next slide and we'll catch up here. This is a storyboard actually that a student did in an internship and we can move on. These are just a few of the sites that we've hosted here on campus in this past year and a half or so. And this is a typical term in terms of employers who recruit our students actively and where they tend to intern for credit. You can go on to the next slide. Um, before I get to this slide behind me, I wanted to say the reason why it can be slow growing to recruit a Chapman student is because they have a major, a minor, and an emphasis area. So they're pretty dynamic. And this is where you come in as parents. It's the liberal arts experience. It's supposed to be kind of unique and different and confusing and based on exploration. So how do you decide on one single internship during the term when you're still going through all this decision making process about what you want to do for the rest of your life when you're being exposed to faculty who are inspiring you and trying to um, make decisions about what class to take and you're not even sure exactly what your major is plus you have a minor and an emphasis area. All of those are, are very inspiring pursuits and then how do you add an internship in there? How do you decide just one for that single term? So that's where we can um, ask for you to help encourage your students to try one thing and commit to it for a term and make decisions. And we have several employers that actually are open to your using your student's talent in the way that your student um, would prefer. Um, many of these employers will let your students take a leadership role and contribute to their workplace rather than just doing menial tasks. So that's very exciting and throughout that process the student might realize that they like analytical work or they like the person-to-person -person type work, the frontline work, or the leadership and management work. There's all sorts of roles that they can get exposure to in that workplace and many of these employers will recruit a variety of majors and have them, even if it's a specific role, use their own specific talent to do what they want to do in that role. So once the student gets in the door to that employer, the, the student often does wow that employer. And that's very exciting. And like Jeanette, who will speak today, she's repeated her internship three times, actually, and which is very exciting. It is for a government agency. And we're doing a campaign now starting um, this term called Get Your Paws in the Door for government agency positions. Because there are jobs out there. And if you do an internship while you're a student, you can get qualified to be hired 
preferably over those students or graduates, I mean, who have not had an internship while they were a student, and you'll qualify for that job at a higher pay rate. So we're trying to get the word out to students, also because the application process to government agency jobs, meaning city, county, federal type positions is very daunting. There's several pages. It's not the typical resume. So we do have an advisor who's here at our Career Services Center to help your student walk through that process and complete that process. So, so there are kind of messages that our administration puts out to students and our faculty remind them of and, and that's where you come in is to encourage students to take two or three internships before they graduate. So as they're progressing through their experience there's multiple ways to do that and I'll kind of touch upon that through the four-year plan but as they're making all of these decisions and getting inspired by different pursuits that's where you can maybe ask them is there an internship that will give you further exposure in this interest or this academic pursuit and and have you done your two or three yet so one of these options is through the GE um, credit where your student can do an internship that counts towards their global citizen cluster that's either through global study or community citizenship or service and the, here's an example of that this is not just a regular internship where you go to a regular site and do work and earn credit maybe in a discipline you have to have your experience speak to these layers of rigor either in the global study or community citizenship and service to make that clear I've got a great example of a communications and dance double major and here are her learning objectives that she set up she wanted to help empower low-income youth and their families to strengthen self-esteem through dance. Um, she wanted to overcome and uh, she wanted to experience and overcome obstacles commonly encountered in administrative-based communication. And she wanted to utilize knowledge from her academic major in communications and minor in dance to engage in arts management. She did this internship at a nonprofit organization that used self-esteem building through dance and they had wraparound family services so there were several degrees of rigor that she was exposed to in terms of that work learn experience that also spoke to the global citizen cluster we can go on to the next one we also have the option for an individualized experiential learning project. Increasingly, I meet students who have already started campaigns or nonprofit organizations before they even matriculate to Chapman. So this is a great option for your student if they want to go above and beyond the classroom and do a project. This is strictly faculty and student driven. There's no site that signs on with the student like in a regular internship. In fact, the student can work with multiple sites, but they're designing a project. Maybe they've already started this project and they want to enhance the rigor and work with the faculty and maybe the faculty will give them a vision as well. And they can earn credit and that can count towards their GE as well. So this is an example of a creating writing major. And the work she did wasn't volunteer work in terms of the way it counted towards her program. She did volunteer at a homeless shelter, but those hours weren't what counted. It was the hours she spent writing about her experience in a structured and faculty mentored way. So her learning objectives for this project were to volunteer my time to help people in order to facilitate my deeper understanding of social issues. Transform my experiential learning in volunteering into fiction that promotes social change. And investigate a deeper understanding of poverty leading to the generation of ideas for solutions that can be incorporated into my story. The faculty that she selected, and she has her choice, is, was a prolific writer on campus and a creative writing author, or a nonfiction author, who, who's just, you know, profound in terms of what he's accomplished with his own writing, and she got to have the one-on-one -on -one mentorship through that, that experience and that project, and then she ended up with a portfolio piece with several creative writing stories about these issues. So we can move on to the next slide. Another example is a music major who was working with Dr. Heron in our Holocaust Center, and she um, chose to research Holocaust-era composers to gain knowledge of repertoire with within a historical context, um, perform works by Holocaust-era composers to generate wider community knowledge and appreciation of this music, create performance groups to expand awareness and a knowledge of Holocaust-era compo compositions amongst student musicians. So she got to identify, practice, and perform these pieces that she devoted special time to under faculty mentorship. So here's a long list of our services and 
It's never too early to start is the big message I want to share today. A lot of students think, oh, I'm, you know, they know that they're pretty talented and have many strengths and pretty good at writing and they've done pretty well so far. And, and a lot of them think, oh, everything will just naturally happen when I'm a senior. It'll, it all just kind of falls into place. And, and occasionally it does, but there's a lot of work that goes into that that the student might not be aware of, but we are, and many of the surfaces here facilitate facilitate that. So it's never too early to start and I really encourage um, you to have your students start with a resume critique with one of our counselors one on one for one hour. Even if they have that relative who's really good at resume writing and gave them all of these tips and tricks, we're here to partner with that student and identify, well, what are the gaps on your resume? Where you can build your resume before you graduate? Maybe there's leadership opportunities that you haven't pursued that might build your resume for the position that you seek or your career aspirations. Maybe there's extracurricular activities, maybe there's service, maybe Maybe there's undergraduate research, or maybe there is a, a certain scholarship that can help you in your pursuit. So also, our center is where students register for internships. It's not like regular registration. There is a different process because there is a four-way partnership to establish that credit. I'll explain in a moment. And we also have many, many events throughout the term. So just coming in once a month at least to see what's new, what's next in, term of, in terms of the events we offer. So now I'll go on to the next slide and mention how our program works. We have, again, all majors can participate, and we want them to explore and make decisions before they graduate. Um, this can be priceless. And this is faculty supported in the sense that we have the student sign on, we have a site supervisor sign on, and also a faculty person sign on, and myself in the career development to make a four-way partnership that's structured throughout the term. They have to do their hours throughout the term that they're registered, and there are preset learning objectives. So there's a, a shared vision and an agreement, and this establishes a positive structure for the work learn experience. So they're really supported throughout that. that that term. And the faculty, often our faculty have a wealth of networking resources, so getting to know the faculty through your internship will help the student to share their strengths with that faculty or challenges or where they can develop their strengths through that faculty advisement. And then the faculty gets to know them really well and often refers to them to further networking contacts to further their career through additional internships or even get jobs. That often is the case. And also the site supervisor is a great mentor and offers networking contacts as well. So I'm just going to touch upon, touch upon a few aspects of the four-year plan because you have this handout in your folders. It's the green handout. And in the first year we can move on. Um, we we want to make sure the student comes in. A lot of the students get our overview at their orientation, but they might think, oh yes, I'll, I'll go there someday, I'll go there later, because there's so many other exciting things to do. And again, the career just happens later, right? I'll, I'll wait until my senior year to get my internship is the common phrase we hear. But, but certainly, starting early and getting to know the resume um, critique experience is great, because as soon as they learn that writing style, they learn that it's a, a life skill, and they can continue to come in for polishes and critiques as needed. And they'll use that resume for so many different things. If they want to be an RA, if they want to be a leader, if they want to take on any type of role on campus, they can use that. We can go on to the second year. And this is where it's starting to become time to make decisions and have a, a clear vision. And when you meet with counselors and advisors, we can walk through that student's strengths and have conversations with them, even as it pertains to their major. So it's really exciting to have those conversations. There's a lot of aha moments. It's nice to have that neutral party discuss options with them. And we often find ourselves exposing to students to concepts they hadn't considered before in terms of a career. We also encourage students to study abroad, so if you're going to attend that session later on today, it's very exciting, and it's one of our most popular programs on campus in terms of, of when students want to learn about the program, but it really does take a lot of support to make sure they see it through. And when it ties to a career focus, that can often help the student to understand why it's so great to take that risk, take some time off campus, and go abroad to become that global citizen. 
In the third year, um, in the junior year, um, by now there should be a more of a clear vision about the major, but just because you have a major doesn't mean that's going to define your career choice. Often you might hear about the the difference between what a job is and what the majors end up doing. So we we at the Career Development Center are still engaged in that exploration approach. I want to make sure your student isn't fixed on, well, I'm, I'm a history major, so I'm going to have to do this. Um, it's it's c more common than we um, might think that students get fixed in terms of a certain career path that might actually be limiting. So we want to continue to discuss their strengths and how they can apply them to the work world. And networking, it's never too um, early to start networking and build that network for a smoother transition before you graduate. Finally, in your senior year, um, we're, we're continuing the network. We have many, many events on campus where we have employers join our, our team for events and we've had students network and secure jobs from those events, so it's very exciting. So finally, I think we can go into the next slide. We do have the website, which is a great way to connect with us. And on this next page, I'll show you that we do have a parents link as well. So you're welcome to come check us out. And I'm going to have Jeanette speak for a little bit. And she's an intern who who's actually made the most of her experience. And um, for, right after her, I'm going to have Mark Krejci, who's a parent and has been recruiting interns at Scott Trade, which was just named one of the best 50 best places to work by Glassdoor. So, and Leah is his current intern, and she's a current Chapman student, business major, and she'll speak a little bit more as well. So, Jeanette, do you want to just talk about your internship for a little bit? Sure. Should I come up? Um, you might want to speak. Yeah, you can come right over here because of the recording. Hello parents, how are you? <laughs> um, <clears throat> my name is Jeanette File and I'm a senior communication major at Chapman and um, the internship program here has changed my life. Um, <laughs> can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so the way that I got my internship was um, one of my sorority sisters had the internship before I did and recommended that I apply for the internship. Um, that's something that's really great about Chapman because it's small, you get to know people within your major and they have internships and pass them on to you and recommend you and start networking, which is amazing. So I got my internship and I was absolutely terrified. I'd never had a big girl job before and um, I walked in and there were cubicles, everyone was dressed professionally. It was a shock to my system. And um, being able to have that experience and grow and um, work inside an organization and learn how they work, how um, the chain of command works and all of that is something that I will use the rest of my life. Um, I, it's also amazing because with the Chapman internship program, I'm able to go to my internship and then bring all of that stuff back to the classroom. So I've been taking um, organizational communication and psychology classes, which all relate to my internship because they help me um, understand how to work within an organization. Also, I'm allowed, I can bring all of that um, knowledge back to my professor. Um, who is my advisor for the internship. And um, she's also a professor within my major, the communication major. And um, I'm able to discuss with her how my coursework relates to the real world and how I can get experience within the real world and within my concentration. Um, also, it's been really great to work one-on-one -on -one with my professors because it actually led to a research assistantship with her with that professor and so that was a really great opportunity as well. Um, also, I, as Ileana said, I, um, I've been at my internship for three semesters. I just kind of stayed there because I loved it so much. Um, it allowed me to kind of integrate myself into the corporate culture at the Orange County Transportation Authority. Um, I've, been, I've been making connections with different departments um, I've been networking 
I actually have been working with human relations and um, it's been a great opportunity because I feel that it could lead to um, a job opportunity. And if it doesn't, um, it has given me so much real world, world experience and um, it's also really helped me um, because even if I decide to change my career path, I have experience within a corporate culture, within working with a boss, working with um, a chain of command. And so it's been a really ex excellent experience. And I encourage you to encourage all of your children, the students, to do the internship program. Thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. Now, in addition to her multiple internships, she will also be doing Semester at Sea. And, and the fact that she's pursued the internship it dovetails often into undergraduate research. So this is a perfect example of how she's really built a WOW resume before she's graduated. So thank you so much, Jeanette, for sharing. And I know your mom's here today, so thank you so much for helping us to encourage parents <laughs> to be part of this. You, if you want to hear more about Jeanette's internship, I believe her mom can chat as well, if that's okay. And I will be at the, the roundtable event today as well, and, and so maybe we'll recruit Jeanette and her mom to join us for lunch. Um, also, I have Mark Kreitchi and Leah, who will speak about um, interns at Scott Trade. And if you want to make sure to speak into the microphone for the recruiting, that would be great. Taking my name tag with me. Well, just by way of inter introduction, my name is Mark Krejci, and I'm a parent of a current Chapman senior who is a theater major. She's not involved in finance or the stock market in any way <laughs> whatsoever. Um, how many of you folks have heard of Scott Trade, online discount stockbrokers? Okay, thank you. And, and how many of you uh, are parents of finance or business, economics, or computer science majors? Okay, well you can probably relate to this talk uh, very well. If, if your students, um, if you or your student are not convinced of the wisdom of pursuing or finding an internship, I want to convince you um, a little bit more with some, with some company facts. Um, and, and this is kind of putting shoe leather on these programs. Uh, what's occurring out there in, in the financial world and within Scottrade in particular? We have, uh, as of December 2010, we've had, we have a total of 3,506 employees. 528 of those are current interns, so that computes out to about 15% of our current headcount are interns. Uh, 115 of the branch managers, such as myself, I'm, I'm the branch manager of the Tustin branch, and we'll talk a little bit more about what we actually do in a branch office and how Leah uh, interacts with us and engages with customers. So 115 of the current branch managers started off as interns at Scottray. Um, 574 of the total population, employee population, uh, started off as interns. Now, th now there's internships available in other fields, not just in the retail brokerage branch office uh, sites, but also within IT, within HR, and within certain operational functions in centers in, in Westminster, Colorado, which is a suburb of Denver, St. Louis, and also Phoenix, Arizona, which is an IT center, backup IT center for us. Uh, so 23% of the branch managers started off as interns. And 19% of the current employees uh, started as interns at, at, in one function or another. So, uh, you know, we in the financial world like to use numbers, and those numbers uh, <laughs> sort of speak volumes as to how an internship translates into full-time employment 
within the financial services industry. Um, I'm delighted to be able to work with a talented students such as Leah. Uh, I've had the privilege of, of working with other talented, energetic, bright Chapman students. Uh, she's the fourth one that we've actually hired, uh, two of which have gone on to full-time positions as broker trainees and, and now as licensed stockbrokers. One was an 09 graduate and one was a graduate of 10. One is working in our Yorba Linda office as a full-time stockbroker, and the other young woman is working in our Northridge office as a full-time stockbroker. Leah is a senior uh, business major, and she started with us in June of this of, of 10. So she's been with us, what is that, eight months now? Mm -hmm. Eight months now. And it's, it's a privilege to, to work with her. She's a delightful young woman. And we really depend on her and rely on her for significant contributions. She's a full member of the staff. Uh, she sits up front. If you can envision a retail brokerage office, many of you raised your hand. So you've either been into a Scott Trade office or been into a Charles Schwab or Merrill Lynch office. Uh, you know they can be busy places, and you know that customers have concerns, questions, and they need expert, accurate information. Leah sits right up front where the customers walk into the branch. She has her own terminal, her own telephone. She meets and greets customers initially. She opens up new brokerage accounts. She fields walk questions from walk-in customers who are exploring uh, opportunities uh, for investing with Scott Trade. She handles follow-up operational questions such as uh, how do I find my cost basis information on for my 2010-1099 tax reporting statement. Can you help me find that? We're doing our taxes here and we need it. Uh, she will report uh, information about past trades. She'll give stock quotes. She'll answer questions about the documents that are required for opening up various types of accounts, such as trust accounts, IRA accounts, business and corporate accounts. She books in stock certificates, uh, checks. She scans check deposits to be credited uh, same day to a customer accounts. So she's an integral part of the team. She participates in staff meetings. Uh, contributing with her own comments. And uh, I'm delighted to be able to work with her and mentor her and be able to share what I know as a branch manager, uh, having been with Scott Trey for 15 years now. So uh, she, of course, will have an opportunity to apply for full-time position here within the next month. Typically, two months before she would graduate, she would put in an application. Uh, as you all know, the recession's been difficult, and the financial services industry is no exception to being vulnerable. Uh, in many ways, we, we've been highly vulnerable. Scott Trade, through prudent management, has not felt as deeply the effects of the recession. We have not laid off anyone. Uh, however, we are, have slowed down the opening of our branch offices. So there's not as many new opening opportunities for graduating interns as previous. But previous, 50% of the interns did land full-time positions. So we still have 503 offices out there, and there is attrition among uh, stockbrokers. So op openings do occur. Uh, you want to urge your student to be mobile. You know, many of them like to come home. They have friends. They have connections in the area. But I encourage all the interns that I work with to set your sights nationally. Uh, and that's kind of uh, a principle that we've learned from the recession, that, that we need to be more flexible. Uh, and as to where we begin our career. So uh, 
that I think is a requisite uh, is needed on the part of a graduating senior, that flexibility to be able to move to other markets uh, to take on the internship. Uh, I think I've, by way of introduction, given you a le at least kind of an overview uh, so you can picture in your mind the type of opportunity there is. And I think uh, Leah can probably share her personal insights as sure. to what she's gained and the challenges that she's faced and dealt with so far. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate you saying all that good stuff about me. Um, so <laughs> that's always nice to know. Um, so hi, everybody. I think it's really great that you guys all came down here today and finding all this good information for your students. I think it's very important to be involved. I know my parents are very involved with what I'm doing, and I love to have them as kind of like you know, my backup when I'm having troubles or trying to figure out what I want to do. So I think it's really, really great that you guys are all here. So like Mark said, I've been at Scott Trade since June, and I have always been a business major since I was a freshman, but I have changed my emphasis three times. So I finally became a finance emphasis for real second semester of my junior year, which is probably a little bit later trying to figure out sort of a direction of what I wanted to do. So once I figured that out, I immediately said, okay, well now I need to find an internship that's finance related because if I hate it, well, I need to know so I can switch again. Um, so I found Scott Trade on Panther Connect, which is the job search engine for us here at Chapman. The, uh, the opportunities are changing there all the time. So you just, you know, look every few weeks or so and there's always new things. And I mean, I was looking a couple days ago and I think there were 250 jobs I searched through. So definitely a lot of opportunities there. So I started at Scott Trade, and uh, the reason why I really am a big advocate of internships is because you just learn a lot differently when you're in class. You can prepare. I'm, I'm pretty good at being a student, so I, you know, I go home, I do my homework, make my study guides. It's all you can prepare. At Scott Trade, it's very hands-on learning, and that was a little bit hard for me at first. I think Mark put me on the phone, so I'll never forget this. Maybe my fifth day of work. He goes, Kaylia, I think it's time for you to answer the phone. I was like, what the heck are you talking about? I'm not, I can't answer the phone. Um, so, and it was just day after day, I would know just a little bit more and I could answer just a few more questions on my own. And so it's just been a really positive experience to be able to learn differently and to make myself be able to learn hands-on in the moment, as opposed to taking my notes, doing my study guide, so in that way, it's been, it's been huge, and that doesn't matter if you're finance or English or, or whatever, it's a great way to learn. And our branch is pretty small, like most of them, we just have the five of us there, and so there's Mark, who obviously has a lot of experience. And we have two licensed stockbrokers who were both economics, finance majors in college, and then one other intern as well. So there's, there's a lot of people with, with a lot of knowledge, so I'd consider kind of both the brokers and Mark to be very good mentors because they've been in my shoes exactly, and both of our brokers are pretty young, so they were in my shoes very, you know, not too long ago, and it's, so it's very easy to, you know, they just give lots of good advice, and oh, we know we've been there, I know it's hard, <laughs> and then now that we have, we have a new intern, so it's kind of nice that I get to kind of roll over and don't worry, I've been there. I remember how scary it was to answer the phone the first few days. So a lot, a lot of learning goes on in our branch. And everyone really takes the time. If we discuss some, some weird thing will come up about these options expired out of the money because it was triple witching Friday or whatever happened. And so we'll sit down and say, well, let's explain that to Leah because she probably doesn't know what we're talking about. And then, you know, I'll go to class three days later and we'll learn what Mark just taught me, you know, a couple days ago at work. So the, the crossover is huge as well. So it's been an incredibly positive experience, just how, you know, you get to find out right off the bat if it's something you can see yourself doing, it falls right in line with what you're doing in school. And the, the different learning process has been, it's been very great. So I would definitely advocate internships. If anyone has any questions about anything afterwards, I'd be happy to answer anything. Thank you so much, Leah. And she did. We'll give her a hand. Yeah. 
She did mention Panther Connect. That is a portal designed specifically for Chapman students. Employers go there to search Chapman students specifically. We invite you to post your opportunity as well if you are an employer. And I do have some cards on that table um, behind um, right there if you'd like to pick them up for recruitment. And I also do have examples of other experiential learning opportunities for GE credit on that table if you want to learn more about what unique ways our students have been um, doing, you know, uh, putting themselves out there to earn credit. Now is a good time to pass up your yellow cards if you have questions. I'll wrap up the presentation in a, in a few minutes, but first I want to introduce another intern who's really made the most of the program. I got to know Oren because he was an assistant in my office, and you, you might be surprised, but not every assistant takes our advice to the degree that Oren did, and he really made, made the most of the internship program. He is a, a film student, but he also wanted to pursue some of his other degree requirements and is also doing a psychology internship. He also really took it seriously when we did some cover letter critiques, and, and we always emphasize a student's past experience in, in supporting professionals, and, and we try and flush that out with them because not every student knows how to articulate that on their resume. But Oren did a very good job at that, and I believe that's one of the key reasons he was hired by HBO for a paid internship in the film industry, which is extremely rare. And they actually read that line that he wrote himself back to him in their interview, which doesn't always happen in the entertainment industry, especially because they barely have time to read the full as resume, so it really does have to be eye-catching. So Oren, do you want to share a little bit about your internship experiences? Yeah, um, like Ileana said, I still remember I remember um, getting interviewed to work in the career development center with Ileana and having her ask me if I knew anything about what goes on there and answering no. Um, but uh, over time I learned that it was, um, and looking back, uh, it was probably the, the smartest thing I did was get a job in that office um, with Ileana, um, which I had for about two years, I think. Um, it gave me a uh, first look at postings for internships and Ileana would fill me in about you know what was what was out there. Um, but um, like she said, I, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Panther Connect, which is the search engine we offer here for internships, jobs, uh, all that good stuff. And uh, I saw a listing for HBO Films, and I was like, HBO, that's, I know that company. Um, so uh, I worked really hard on my pretty uh, uh, blank resume uh, at the time. and. Uh, I uh, remember going into the interview extremely nervous, and right away they read me back a line that Ileana and I had worked on, something along the lines of, I had one internship before, and I tried to explain my experiences there, and they read it back to me and said, this is exactly what we're looking for. Um, so uh, I, I had a great experience at HBO, and um, I was there last semester, in, uh, commuting three days a week to Santa Monica. For I don't know if you guys are from Southern California. It was terrible, but the uh, like two hours each way it was awful. Um, but uh, <clears throat> like she said, it was it was paid, which was extremely rare, and which is pretty much why I, <clears throat> I pursued it, um, which made the commute bearable. Um, but um, I, I don't know. If, I'll, I'm, I'm not familiar with internships mainly outside the, the film portion. That's kind of what I do. So uh, for me, it was it was incredible. Just like you know, you talked about the phones. I mean, I remember having to roll calls to Danny DeVito and Edward Norton one day, and I was <laughs> very scary. Um, but uh, and, and and the president of HBO Films was right there, and I had to get his coffee all the time. And, um, <laughs> so very, you know, make sure I got the order right. And, um, but uh, it, it was great, and, and putting HBO on my resume really opened some doors for me. So now I'm at the uh, ABC Disney and Television Group, and having a wonderful experience there. Got to hold one of Walt Disney's Oscars. It's very heavy, um, and um, it, I mean, it all started with just getting familiar with the internship program. And I, I, I don't really know what this what this seminar is, but like, if, I don't know if your students are incoming freshmen or already here, but uh, no matter what, just highly encourage just going up to the Career Development Center and asking questions. I mean. I remember, I don't work there anymore technically, but when I was there, I, I used to love to see that freshman coming up and just asking questions and wish I had done that. I got started a little late. It, it's all working out, but uh, it, the earlier your students come up, ask questions, find out what's going on. I've even used the internship program to fulfill GEs. I do a psychology internship at um, 
the Orange Senior Center here and just go and observe senior citizens and help with whatever I can and it fulfills a, a general education requirement for me. So there's lots of different ways you can use the internship program, um, which is really great and that's all really Ileana's work. So um, yeah, that's all I really have to say. Thank you, Aaron. We'll give him a hand. It is, it is more than me that makes the internship program. In fact, one of Oren's faculty is, is Roy Bullock, and who runs the, he's a pioneer for the internships in terms of the degree of participation in that program. And, and he really helps students develop a poise in terms of listening and understanding the aging process. And many of our students go on to pursue the type of internship that Oren is doing. And, and they really do come away with a poise that they can use in degree of professions. So again, this faculty men mentorship is the key, and not every university offers that in terms of how you do an internship for credit. Maybe it's a seminar course where you have 25 plus other students with one faculty who isn't from a specific <laughs> discipline. And and that's the real brilliance I think to this program is they can the student can pick a specific discipline. It doesn't have to directly apply to their internship. We have a lot of PR students who are maybe working with a psychology faculty. And there is a direct connection, of course, in terms of advertising. But the student doesn't fully understand that. And they always ask me, is that OK? And I say, by all means, they have a little bit of an interest. They have a spark. And so we have this conversation to explain some connections and career aspirations that connect as well. Just um, in terms of the questions I've received, I did receive a question about international internships. and. If you have an interest or if your student has an interest, we do encourage them to go to the Career our Center for Global Education. All of the internships that the Career Development Center um, works with are mostly domestic. That is because there are certain <coughs> contracts and safety factors we want to ensure for your student, and we check out all of those international programs rigorously. So please direct all of your questions or attend Kitty Roller session later today. It's a very exciting session. I also have a question about the IELP, the Individualized Experiential Learning Project. The question is, is it like an independent study program? Could a student do something in the summer or fall uh, semester um, in lieu of, of a class. Independent studies are often offered when a full course can't be run, maybe due to attendance or on occasion where a faculty and a student have a specific research-based opportunity that they're pursuing where there's no project beyond that or it's meeting a regular course requirement that the student and faculty haven't designed separately. So it's already meeting a preset course requirement. The individualized experiential learning project can be used for GE credit for the global citizen cluster, or it can be used for general upper division credits a, need, a student needs to graduate. And just something to keep in mind, I like to, we always tell every student, and we have you in mind when we're doing this, that in summer, internship credit is like any other credit. You pay per credit like you would at most small private universities in the summer because the financial aid is different. So just like any other course credit, you do pay. So we do tell students to think ahead plan ahead, do your internship in the fall and spring as you would any other course when you bulk up on your course load because you have 12 to 18 credits at no extra cost when you're full time in fall and spring. And you also get up to four credits in January if you're enrolled in both of those terms full time. So you can fly back home to anywhere in the domestic US including Guam and we've had a few other sites where students have earned credit during the January, the month of January and gotten that credit at no extra cost. So keep in mind you have to do those hours during the term that you're registered just like you sit in the class during the term that you're registered and if a student does want to do a credit bearing internship over the summer because many employers do require that now because of Fair Labor Standards Act um, we do offer a half credit option which is more affordable than the typical three credits so I can collect any cards at this time we have about five minutes and I do want to thank each of you for coming. We're so pleased to speak with parents. You do have a few other handouts from our office, and I can speak with you further at the um, thank you at the lunch. You can also follow up with me. My card is at the table, and we do have opportunities for students to 
pursue their academic career and make decisions through personality assessments? That was the question I just received. And that's a great way to make decisions or understand your strengths and also how you interact with others. Um, there's personality assessments, interest inventories that our counselors will go over with your student one-on-one. -on -one. So that's great to do early on. What happens from that experience is that students will be able to articulate their strengths more effectively in the interview. And when you see a student in an interview that can give concrete examples based on their strengths, that is often the criteria that is that gets them hired because then the interview committee of course has evidence to make the hire. Many students that I encounter who haven't partnered with us don't know how to say their strengths. They know that they have a few. And they know what they like doing a lot. But to articulate that in an interview setting is kind of a different conversation that they're not used to having all the time. And, and then to give evidence is also something that they haven't thought of because it's not like writing a, re a essay or, or doing another class project. It's, it's that quick sound bite about how they've been challenged or worked through a problem to resolve an issue successfully or realized what was going wrong and, and they used their liberal arts experience to advance. A lot of the students might not know that their liberal arts experience does count on their resume and that's what we review with them when they meet with us that by now they have all of your students have had experience with analytical work um, research writing team and group projects presentations public speaking that they can list as accomplishments in a featured experience section on their resume so a lot of the students will just have a general section on on experience which can include work experience and and even some internships but if you have a targeted experience area such as communications experience or PR and advertising experience or, or film production experience this will demonstrate to the employer that you have expertise already and and oftentimes when students use that lens yes they have leadership roles they have extracurricular projects they have internships they have all sorts of <coughs> courses with accomplishments that they can include to bulk up that section once they develop this writing style it's all about keeping up. I call it a living journal in terms of the resume. And, and we say, sure, send me a resume. That's five pages. That's fine. But it all starts with that personality assessment or that interest in inventorying, knowing how you can work in the work world. Are you analytical? Are you more about organization? Are you interested in, in people? And all of those aspects that you can actually feature as strengths in your resume or, or that interview, et cetera. So there's so much work that we can do with the student when we partner with them, but we need them to take that first step. We can do the outreach endlessly, but um, it's, it's no, there's no, no hooks or any grabbers that we have to get them in the office. It's really their initiative, and, and we do enjoy that. We do have, get invited for class presentations, and we do get the word out, but when they realize how we can help them, which is different for every student, that is key and and often they come to us and they're confused because they don't know how to start that process so resume critiques personality assessments interest inventories are a great first step or just having a conversation with the counselor to see what is out there with regards to their major or their field and how they can think beyond that box is a great first step to begin the process and a lot of students honestly do get frustrated they won't come in because they're not sure how to initiate that process they see these services we offer they might not have had a class presentation or maybe they did a few terms ago and and forgot what it was that the reason that they thought they should go in and other things came up and other exciting things came up and they're they're, they're busy our students are busy here doing a lot of things so all of your encouragement really does matter and we're here to partner with them and we do understand that it is confusing and it can be frustrating but once we partner with them individually then it can be so exciting so thank you so much for coming can I say one more thing yeah. before we go? And, and just as a parent to a parent, uh, <laughs> these are challenging economic times, and our students need our help. Uh, so I would invite you all to open up your hearts and your businesses, if you're self-employed, or if you're in a company where you're in a position to make a connection with the HR department to create internships. Uh, not just to be a career counselor for your student, that's vital and important, but, but to step forward and step up and really do some thinking and soul searching about offering an internship. Uh, if that's 
not in the cards or if that's not doable, there's other ways you can contribute. You can uh, be a speaker. Uh, we have mi internship mixers, meet and greet with companies. You could do that. You could come on campus uh, and be part of this, a guest speaker series presenting a workshop or an information session. And you can register for the career and internship fair that we have coming up on March the 15th. And then finally, you could also invite a student to come to your office for an informational interview on pursuing a career in your particular field. If you're a graphic artist, if you're an architect, if you're an engineer, whatever your field is, small business owner, uh, talk about entrepreneurship. So please think about that. Our students need your help. The recession is deep and wide and uh, we'd appreciate any help you could provide as employers. Thank you. Yeah, very much so. Uh, one, I have one comment and one question. Uh, you know, we as the parents know that many times students don't go and take advantage of these kind of programs so because they don't know where the building is. So where, do the, where, where is the building located on campus and what are the hours? Certainly. We're located in Argus Forum and if you visited the campus with your student for admissions before you your student enrolled or applied, you, you'll find us right next door. So third floor, Argus Forum and it's on our website as well. I encourage you to um, start there. You'll see a list of our resources for both parents and students. What are the hours? Oh, eight to five regular hours, but often we have counselors who work late on certain evenings, and, and I'm there much more than the regular hours. Are you open during the school day? We are open year round, and we do have Good Friday closed because of, of what the, the university does as a tradition, but year round we are we are in action and even during the summer is a great time for students to take the extra time and polish their resume and begin the the partnership